Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by my channel. My name's Bobby and I am going to work on a bunny garland. Uh, this pattern comes from Yarnspirations and um, hopefully we'll be able to get through this. So for this pattern you need an I9 hook, scissors, a needle, and several colors of worsted weight yarn to include white for the bunny's tails. You'll also need either a pom-pom maker or a two-pronged fork in order to make the pom-poms. I'm going to start with the magic loop. And this is literally just a slip knot that has not been closed. So then you're going to create a chain stitch and pull that tight. <clears throat> now everything you work on the magic loop, you're going to work around both the loop and your tail so that when you pull it, it'll pull that tight. So you're going to start with eight single crochets in your loop. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's my first round, eight single crochets in the loop. And then you're supposed to join to the first stitch with a slip stitch. So I'm going to pull this tight and then slip stitch into the first stitch. This is the first stitch of the round. Right here. And that's, even though our slip stitch is in there, we're gonna work in that first stitch. So on chain on round two, you're going to chain one, and then you're going to do a puff stitch in that first stitch. So a puff stitch is a yarn over, push through, yarn over, pull through. We're going to do that four times. So yarn over, push through, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, push through, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, push through, yarn over, pull through. And now you'll have nine loops on your stitch. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's your original working loop and the eight that you just created. Then you're going to yarn over, you're going to pull through eight of those loops. Like so. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through two. That is the puff stitch. <clears throat> now you're going to chain one. And in the next stitch, you're going to do another puff stitch. So it's yarn over, push through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, push through, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, push through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, push through, yarn over, pull through, and that should be nine stitches on your, or nine loops on your hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're going to yarn over and pull through eight, and you're going to yarn over and pull through two, and that's the second puff stitch. So now you have a puff stitch, a chain stitch, a puff stitch. A chain stitch. You're going to do this eight times. So you'll have a total of eight puff stitches and eight chain spaces at the end of this round. So I have one, two, three, four. So you'll have a total of 16 stitches. Two, three, four. Two, 
three, four. We have a chain. Two, three, four. We have a chain stitch. One, two, three, four. Uh oh. There we go. And chain stitch. Making sure I get all my stitches. So there's one, two more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, and a chain stitch. This is my last puff stitch for this round. Three, four. And then one chain stitch, and then you're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of that round. And in this case, if you look here, this was my slip stitch. This was my chain. This is my first puff stitch, the top of it. And that's where we're going to slip into. So I'm going to go in here. You're going to yarn over and pull through both the puff stitch and your last chain match or slip stitch. That is the end of round two. And this was the first puff stitch was right there. And you can put the stage stitch mark, keep that stitch marker in there if you want. Um, I find that since I'm not working in a spiral, and I'm working, I'm closing each round off. I know exactly where I'm at. All right, so round three, you're going to chain one. You're going to work a puff stitch in the first stitch. Three, four. So there's my puff stitch. And then I'm going to chain one. And now you're going to work a puff stitch in the chain one space. Now, that space is right here. So you're going to yarn over. And now I'm going completely around this chain stitch. If you'd like, you can work in it. But I find that very difficult. I don't want to fight to get in there. So I'm working completely around the stitch. One, two three, four. There's my puff. And then I'm going to chain one. Now, I want to make sure that this puff stitch is above that chain stitch so that I can get into the top of this puff stitch for the next stitch. So for each stitch of the previous row, you are going to do a puff stitch. And in between each puff stitch, you're going to do a chain one. So we're going to do this again around this chain stitch. At the end of this round, you'll have 16 puff stitches and 16 chain ones for a total of 32 stitches.
right, so now I've finished row th round three and I'm going to slip stitch to the top of the first puff stitch, which is right here. And that is round three. We should have 16 puff stitches and 16 chain spaces. Round four, you're going to chain one and you're going to single crochet in the same stitch. And you're going to do two single crochets in your chain space. One, two, and you're going to single crochet in the top of each puff stitch. So for each chain space, you're going to do two single crochets. And for each puff stitch, you're going to do one single crochet. And this is going to give us 48 stitches at the end of this round. Uh oh, I'll put two single crochets in that lip stitch. Two, one, one. Two, one. Right. And then we're going to slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet. And that is the end of round four. There should be 48 stitches around your bunny. Now we begin working on the head. You're going to work in back and forth in rows. Row one, you're going to chain one. And you're going to single crochet in the same stitch. So in the same stitch that you just slip stitched in. So the first stitch of the round. And you're going to do eight more single crochets. So a total of nine single crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn your work and you're going to chain two, and that counts as your first half double crochet. Then you're going to yarn over, you're going to push through, yarn over, pull through yarn over and pull through three. That's a half double crochet. So that's my 
second half double crochet. You're going to have a total of 10 at the end of this. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So it's 10 half double crochet. All right, so at the end of row two, you should have 10 half double crochets. And you are going to chain one. And you're going to do front post half double crochet. So you're going to yarn over. And you're going to go around the post. And do the half double crochet. I'm going to show you again. I'm going to pull this out so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. You're going to go not in the top of the stitch, not in this part of the stitch. You're going to go down below the stitch and do on the post itself. And you're going to do the half double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, go around that post, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. And that's what it looks like. And this is what it's going to look like on the other side. So and this is completely different than any other stitch you do where you're working in the top of the stitches. You're working below the stitches around this post here. Are doing 10 of those. So it should look like that. And on the back side, it should look like this. <clears throat> now we're going to chain one and turn for row four. We're going to skip this first stitch. So we're going to skip the first stitch and we're going to single crochet. In the next two stitches, one, two, and then we're going to single crochet two together. So you're going to go through the stitch, yarn over, pull through, and you're going to go through the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, and you're going to yarn over and pull through three. And that brings those two stitches together. <clears throat> then you're going to single crochet in three stitches, one, up, oh, went too low there. Two, three, and then you're going to single crochet these last two together. So yarn over and pull through, go through the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, and pull through those three. And that brings those three, those two stitches together. So you should have seven stitches at the end of this round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you're going to start working on the ears. And the first ear, you're going to chain one, turn your work. You're going to skip the first stitch and you're going to single crochet in the next two stitches. So one, two. Now you're on row two, you're going to chain and turn. You're going to single crochet in this first stitch and two single crochets in the next stitch. So one, two, three. And that gives you three stitches on row two. Now row three through six, you're going to chain one and you're going to single crochet three stitches. So one, two, three, that's row three, one, two, three, that's row four, one, two, 
one, two, three. That's the end of row five. One, two, three. That's the end of row six. So now we're on row seven, and row seven is chain one, turn, skip the first stitch. We're going to do three half double crochets in this stitch, and then we're going to slip stitch in this last stitch. So we're going to skip this stitch, and then we're going to do three half double crochets. One, two, three, and then we're going to do a slip stitch in that last one, and that gives you that nice rounded top to your ear. And then it says to fasten off. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through, just like a chain stitch. Snip my yarn and pull that tight. And that's ear number one. Now the second ear, we're going to work across just just like we were working across now we're going to start back down here this is the end of the first ear and this says skip the stitch next to the inner ear of the first ear so we're going to skip this stitch and we're going to attach the yarn here and all i'm going to do is make sure i got a tail i'm going to yarn over and pull through yarn over and make a chain stitch and that attaches it to my work if you can see that and then it says slip stitch to the next stitch so we're going to slip stitch and now that's nice and and locked into place and now you're going to chain one you're going to single crochet in the same stitch that you slip stitched into and single crochet into the next stitch. And that is two single crochets. And that's row one of the second ear. Row two is chain one. Don't forget, I, I turned my bunny, but you can make sure you turn your bunny. And then you're going to do two single crochets in the first stitch. And you're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch. So now we have three single crochets. One, two, three. And row three, I'm going to chain one, turn my work, in single crochet in each stitch across. So three. So this is row three. Three single crochets chain and turn row four three single crochets wait a minute did one two three four so this is row five three single crochets Row six, three single crochets. And now it should be all but one stitch the same height as the other one, just in case. I'm going to look at it real quick and make sure. And it sure is. See, that's all I have left is my. So I'm going to chain one and do row seven, which is the three half double crochets in the center. And then we're going to slip stitch to this stitch. And that is the end of the second ear. I'm going to do a chain stitch. And that chain stitch is just to lock it into place. Go ahead and clip your yarn, pull it through. And that gives you two ears now. Now we're on to finishing with the right side facing up. 
just on this side. Right side facing up. You're going to attach the yarn with a slip stitch to the back loop of the first stitch where the body and head meet. Basically, where the head and the body meet right here, we're going to slip stitch that yarn right on there, just like that. And now, make sure you don't lose your tail there. Now, you are going to slip stitch in the back loops of each body stitch around. Slip stitch in the row ends and stitches around the head and ears and join the last slip stitch to the first slip stitch. So, we're already connected. Now we're going to go around the bunny. And we're working in the back loop only, right here. And you're just going to slip stitch all the way around your bunny. So. around doing the whole body first So now I'm towards the end of the body and you have to make sure that you get all your stitches going up the sides here as well. So I'll do this last stitch on the body. Now this is row one. So I'm going to slip stitch there, row two, and I'm going to put two chain stitches or two slip stitches in row two because half double crochet takes up one and a half stitches. So the next row, I'm going to do one. If I don't give myself a couple extra stitches in there, it's going to get tight and it's going to pinch. So I'm giving myself a couple extra stitches while I'm working around this. All right. Now I'm at the ear and I'm working just on the sides here.
That was my seven rows. So I have seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I have extra. No, I don't. That's in this hole here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now I have three stitches across the top of the ear. So I'm going to go and work my three slip stitches in one, one in each of those. And now I'm pulling this step back away so that it's out of my way so I can see. And I'm going to make sure that I get seven stitches going back down the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Same on this other ear. Make sure you get all seven rows going up and all seven rows going down and the three on the top. So, let's put my yarn somewhere in there. Back down to the head here. Sometimes it's hard to know where to go with the with the hook. And then that now we're back around and I'm gonna slip stitch. Just like that. And I am going to cut it off. But if you notice, I'm not doing I'm not doing the, the chain one to, to put a knot in there because I'm going to do a seamless join. So this way you don't see that knot. I'm going to, this is where we came out of. This is our last stitch, our slip stitch. And we're going to pick up, not the stitch that we're in, but the next stitch. We're going to put the yarn through like that. And then we're going to go back in this stitch that we co we're coming out of. So that way it looks like a stitch and gives you a seamless join. And then you're just going to you're going to work that into the 
you're going to weave it into your project so that it disappears. And I always recommend going um, in a, at least two directions with your weave so that it doesn't just slide right out. So that one's done. Snip that one off. And now you have to go through and you got to make sure you put in all of these ends. The first one I'm going to start with is the magic ring. And I'm going to pull it nice and tight because I want to make sure that it's nice and tight. And then I'm going to weave it in. Snip that off. That way, I know it's already done. Let's go to the next one. And it doesn't matter what order you put these in, just as long as you weave them all in to your bunny so that they're not visible. This one is coming from there. I've got to bring it just like this to lock it in. And then the one ring. Second way. Yeah. Right. Almost done. Oops. So that is the finished bunny for the bunny garland. The next thing to do. Okay, now that we've created our bunny, we need to make a pom-pom. You can either use a pom-pom maker or you can cheat and use a meat fork from your kitchen. I'm going to show you both ways to do this. So you're going to start with your white yarn. If I can find my white yarn, we'll be in good shape. All right, there it is. And to do the, to make it look consistent, you want to make sure to use the same number of wraps for each pom pom. Um, I'm going to do 35 wraps around the fork. So you're going to hold the yarn in place. Two, three, oops. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five. And you want to cut off your yarn. And then you're going to use about a 
a 10 inch string and you're going to wrap that through the fork like this around your yarn and you're going to cinch that down nice and tight tie it in a square knot or any type of knot really I didn't really get it very tight, so I'm going to retie it on the other side. I'm going to bring it around and I'm going to retie it just to make sure I got it nice and cinched down. So, and then what you're going to do is you're going to cut. Um, right off of the fork, just like this. Fluff it. to go through and make sure that any stragglers are trimmed off. And that gives you your pom-pom. So that's how you make it with a fork. Pom-pom maker isn't much different. You're going to lift these pieces out and you're going to wrap around this rainbow here. So oops. Not 32, 33, 34, 35. All right. And you're going to close that up on this side. And you're going to open this side up. And you're going to do the same thing. 35 wraps. Right, and you're going to close this side up. Now, it's all closed up. What you're going to do is you're going to slice this just like this. Same on this side. You're going to slice it just like this. And you're going to take your yarn, a 10 inch yarn. And I'll run right inside here, just like this. I'm going to tie it. Same thing. You're going to tie it right over left, left over right. Makes the knot neat, tidy, and tight. If I can get it on there right, let's see, it'll go right there. So I'm going to cinch it down in there. That's my square knot. And then 
then we should be able to open it up. And these things slide apart. And there is your your money tail. Okay, now you want to go through and you want to snip any loose ends. And that's the two different ways to do a pom-pom. All right, so. Now that we have the pom-pom, we're going to attach it to the bottom portion of the body between rounds two and three, not securely in trim excess yards and ties. So this is the back side. This is the front side. We're going to take our yarn. This was row one, no, row one, row two, and row three. So we're going to put it between row two and row three. And I'm going to tie it right here. It's tied right around the top of row three. That's where I'm going to tie mine. So I'm going to go in here like this. Pull it through. I'm going to go in here like this and pull it through. That will bring it right there. I'm going to flip my bunny over and I'm going to tie a square knot again. So right over left. Left over right. Make sure not neat, tidy, and tight. And just for good measure, I'm going to take this and I'm going to hide a little bit of my yarn, my white yarn, into my bunny before I cut it off. So. I go like this. Just a little bit, not a lot, just enough to put it in there. And then I'm going to snip it. And that's going to hide right in there. And that's my completed bunny. So. So now that we have all of our bunnies done, I've done four, you're going to chain 20 with your white yarn. So you're going to make a slip knot. And you're going to chain 20. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And then you're going to attach a bunny ear using a slip stitch, the topmost stitch of the first ear. So you're going to pick up the top stitch here on the top of the ear, and you're just going to slip stitch it in. So you're going to yarn over and pull through the bunny ear and the loop on the hook. And then you're going to chain five, two, three, four, five. And you're going to do the same thing at the top of this bunny ear. So 
like a whole lot of money together. And then you're going to four chain ten. Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And attach your next bunny. And you'll continue this until you've attached all your bunnies to your garland that you have decided that you wanted to have. And you can change the placement of your bunnies along the along the chain, like if you wanted them further apart, you could easily just do more chains between, but make sure that you do five chains between the top two ears. So that way that's always going to be consistent. And make sure you chain the same number of chains between one bunny and the next. You can make it as, as wide as you want or as skinny as you want between the bunnies, but make sure that you do it consistently so that it has a similar look across the entire garland. And there we go. Four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Split the yard. Three, four, five. Two, three, six, seven, eight, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, which gives me the same as what I have on the other end. So I go ahead and cut that, pull it through, and then. to create my loop because that's 20 and that'll be 10 between. So that's the same distance there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to tie it off right here. Make sure that's nice and pulled down on there. Pull this tight, and I'm going to make one more knot to make sure it holds well. That gives me a loop to hang from. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, where I started the beginning, the first chain 20. I'll bring it in here. 
through. I'm going to create a now event. I guess figure out why I couldn't get there. I want to make sure that I get that nice and tight on there, like that. And I'm going to create one more knot on there to make sure that it doesn't come loose. It's nice and sturdy. Or maybe that may not have left myself enough here. Pull it into a knot, and then you can weave your ends into your chain, or you can just snip them off. I'm going to weave mine into my chain because I like to make sure that I leave some yarn in case it comes undone. Snip it off so we'll have it strings hanging. And there you go. Same on this side. Weave that into my chain. Snip it off, and there you go. And that is the completed bunny garland. Let's zoom out here. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them down on the bottom. If you like the video, go ahead and subscribe. Um, I try and post a video at least once every two weeks. Thanks so much and have a great day.